Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to do some curve sketching and I'm going to choose a tricky example with exponentials. So here is the example that I'm going to use. And so like I like to do with curve sketching videos, we're going to start with domain, symmetry, and asymptotes. So starting with the domain, so I have really, I, I can put in any number I want for these um, x exponents, so this e to the x minus 4, e to the negative x minus 5x. I can really put in any numbers that I want, so in this case, uh, I'm just going to note here that my domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. And then for symmetry, so let's see, if I go ahead and do this test, so this is going to come out as e to the negative x minus 4e to the positive x plus 5x. And so there is really no symmetry then from that test. And then for the asymptotes, so if you try to think about this as taking the limit um, as x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity, you're not going to have any asymptotes here. The, this is not going to tend to anything. And since the domain is all real numbers, there are going to be no asymptotes. Okay, so with that being said, now let's think about derivatives here. So I just like to get these out of the way. So starting with my function. So obviously we know that that's the, the first, the, the function that we're starting with. So now let's take the derivative of that. So that's gonna be e to the x plus four e to the negative x. Remember you're using the chain rule here. So you have to take the derivative of negative x, which is just negative one. So it's gonna flip the sign here. And then this will be minus five and then let's just go ahead and take the second derivative as well, just to get it out of the way. So if I take the second derivative, this will be e to the x minus 4e to the negative x, and then that minus 5 drops out. Okay, so now we can talk about critical points. So we already found our first derivative, so now how do I find the critical points of this? Well, this is going to require thinking a little bit more creatively, so obviously I want to set this equal to 0. But you're probably looking at this and saying, I have no idea maybe how to solve this. So you just have to start kind of playing around with this and thinking about how this right here, this negative exponent actually creates a fraction, right? So this is going to be e to the x plus 4 over e to the x minus 5. And then just one of like the, the best practices, if you will, when you don't know what you're doing, like you're not quite sure what to do, but you're playing around with the form. In general, very often, if you have a fraction, then a lot of times it's worth it to actually get a common denominator for everything. So let's see what happens if I do that. So this will end up becoming e to the 2x over e to the x, and then this is still 4 over e to the x, and then this will be minus 5e to the x over e to the x equals 0. And so I can put all of this over that common denominator now. Uh, so this will be e to the 2x, and then how about we do, we, we put all the e to the x's together like this. So I just kind of rearranged everything, and this still, still all equals 0. Okay, so now we can get a little more creative with this. So let me clear some space. And really what you want to notice here now is I've got this e to the 2x and then minus 5e to the x and plus 4. Like this kind of looks like, like a pseudo thing I could factor. So that's kind of the, the big thing you got to notice here. So if you're, you're saying, I don't know how I would factor that, you can trick your brain into seeing this by saying, all right, let's 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 pretend for a second, instead of having these e to the x's, let me switch this out. e to the x I'm going to rewrite as y, which means that my e to the 2x will be a y squared. So just look at what would happen if I did this then. So this would be y squared minus 5y plus 4. You see that? And that's something you can totally factor. So this would factor as y minus 4 and y minus 1. But now I can factor this and just replace the y's with the e to the x's. So that's kind of a, a clever a clever trick. All right. So now I have this and this is something I can probably work with. So let me let me get rid of all the stuff with the y. 
And now we just have to kind of go back to the basic old principles of algebra. So I need to take each one of these factors and set them equal to zero. So I'll start with the easier ones. So e to the x minus one equals zero. Well, that means that e to the x equals zero. So that means that x must equal zero. So that's one value. So let me maybe note that over here, x equals zero. So let's do the other one now, I'll clear some space. So for this other one, now I'm gonna have e to the x minus four equals zero. So e to the x will equal four. And so now you've really just gotta think about how are you gonna get x by itself. And so that you can do by taking the natural log of each side. And so then in doing that, you know that you can bring this x exponent down and also the natural log of e is just equal to one. So this right here is just equal to one. So what I get then is x equals the natural log of four. So there's my other critical point. And, and notice I don't have to worry about the denominator at all. So e to the x is never gonna equal zero. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. So I have kind of my, my two critical points here. Okay, so now we can pivot to our intervals of increasing and decreasing. So now for our reference, uh, I just have the derivative and the critical points here. So let's see, so now I wanna make my table. So I'm gonna break up my intervals and my sine of f prime. And so let's see, my intervals then, this is gonna go from negative infinity to zero and then zero to the natural log of four, and then the natural log of four to infinity. So that's taking my domain into account. So now um, I'm gonna just take some test points and kind of plug them, them into our derivative. So starting with something that's negative, why don't we just examine what happens with f prime of negative one. So this is gonna give me e to the negative one plus four e minus five, that's what that's gonna come out to. And so, you know, you can either use a, a calculator to figure this out or you can just kind of eyeball it. So in looking at this, so remember E is like 2.71. So four times 2.71, that's much bigger than five. And then E to the negative one is also positive. So this whole thing is gonna end up being positive. Um, or you could plug it into a calculator. I got about 6.24 and some change. Okay, so this first interval is positive. Okay, so let's let's do this again. And now let's pivot to the next interval. So the natural log of four is like 1.3, it's, it's a decimal, but so a number between zero and the natural log of four would be one. So if I look at f prime of one, and I just try to plug all of that in. So now, this is like 2.71, this is like four divided by 2.71. So from this, five is gonna be just a little bit bigger than these two. Again, or you, you could either just kind of eyeball this or if you're, you know, wanna be sure, you can plug it into a calculator. So I also plugged it into a calculator. I got that this ends up being negative. And now I just have to choose uh, one last number. So something in this interval, so I'll choose two. So let's see, I'll get rid of all this and we'll do f prime of two. And so I get e squared plus four e to the negative second minus five. And so if you, again, you can kind of decide how you wanna do this. Uh, you know that this is like 2.71 squared, so that's gonna be maybe a little bit bigger than five, and then you've got this other fraction here that's still positive. So all of this ends up being um, positive. So there I have my intervals of increasing and decreasing. So I'll just, I'll note that now. So let's see, so I'll write increasing on and decreasing on zero to the natural log of four. Okay, so we've got that part done. And so now that we see this, we can also make some determinations about max and min. So I can see here at zero, so I'm going from increasing to decreasing. So this means that I've got a max here. And then uh, from here, I'm going 
decreasing to increasing, so this means that I have a min here. So if I get rid of this, I can also find my max and min points. So remember when you do this that you want to plug that point into the original function. So if I take a look at f of 0, so this is going to give me 1 minus 4, really, so that's going to equal negative 3. So I've got one point at 0, negative 3, and then my min, if I take f of the natural log of 4, this will come out to negative 3.93 and some change. So this is the natural log of 4, negative 3.93. Okay, so next up, um, now we want to find any potential inflection points. So I've got the second derivative written here. And it's going to be very much the same approach. So, you know, I'm going to set this equal to 0. Um, and then, you know, I can write this as this fraction, and then I can work towards getting this to be all under a common denominator. And so actually with, with this one, so um, we can go ahead and just set e to the 2x minus 4 equal to 0. So I need to figure out where does e to the 2x equal 4. So once again, I can take the natural log of each side. To get that 2x will equal the natural log of 4. So x will equal 1 half times the natural log of 4. And hey, so think about your properties of logarithms. Um, so let me, let's see if I can squeeze this in. So if I take the natural log of 4 to the 1 half, this is just equal to the natural log of 2. Boom. So now we can start some work with concavity. So I've got the second derivative and then I've got our possible inflection point. So let's see, oops, I'll, I'll use maybe the blue color here. So I'm gonna have my interval and then my sine of f double prime. So I'm gonna go from negative infinity to the natural log of two and then from the natural log of two to infinity. Okay. So now, trying to plug in some points here. So I can use zero in this case um, for, for this interval. So if I look at f double prime of zero, that's just gonna come out to really one minus four, which is negative three. So this is gonna be negative. And then, going to the other one. So the natural log of two, if you just take a look at the value of it, it's, it's less than one. So in this interval, I'm gonna use the value of one. So if I look at f prime of one, this is gonna give me e minus four over e is what that comes out to. And so this is a decimal. So this came out to like 1.25, so this is positive. So we can see now that the natural log of two is indeed an inflection point. So let's figure out what that point is. So let's see, I'm gonna take f of the natural log of two, and I just plug that into my calculator to get this decimal answer, negative 3.466. Okay, so now I've got this point here. So the natural log of two and then negative 3.466. Okay, so now we have everything we need to graph. So I've, I've rounded up all of the relevant information here, and then actually, I, I know I wrote natural log of four, and I, I wrote out what that is as a decimal just to help me graph it, natural log of two, here's the decimal form of that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just mark a few points, I guess. So let's see, I've got zero, negative three, so there's my max, and then my min is this um, one point Three eight negative three point nine three so one point three eight and this is pretty close to four ish so we'll go right about there and then my inflection point is at this point six nine negative three point four six six so I just got to kind of guesstimate here so everything's kind of pretty close so now just to finish this, so I need to go increasing, decreasing, and increasing. So there is my curve. So why don't we take a second to compare this to Desmos. 
Okay, so I went to desmos.com and I just plugged in our function and we did a pretty darn good job, I would say. So I can see here, here's my max at zero, negative three. Here's that uh, 1.386, negative 3.93. So yeah, we did a pretty good job. Okay guys, and so that's what I've got for that one. Hopefully that was helpful. Any questions, you can always leave me a comment. I'll catch you next time.